friends. Hi, dear ones. This is Sally down on Camp Creek, and it is quiet in my house today. Can you hear that? That's the washing machine. It'll stop in a minute, but everything else is quiet. Oh, there it went. Oh, no, it didn't. But anyway, welcome to my crafty living room, my crafty corner of the universe, my crafty world. Actually, as far as crafts go, lately all I've been doing is crocheting and a little bit of knitting. But I've got some needle felting I'm thinking about. And my spinning wheel is all ready. It's all sitting in there. i got to be careful to sit up. Because I've made two of these videos that were fine. Except I looked like Jabba the Hutt. I had this... Um, I had this... Green. I'm trying to think of the color. Puce, maybe? This horrible green shirt on. And I look like something out of Star Wars, literally. Anyway, so I just like got rid of that. I don't want I don't want that out in the world. It was terrible. But anyway, I'm back. I finally, finally, I'm sitting down because my house is quiet. So and I'm thinking about yarn today. Yes, yes, yes. I let's see. Um I'm thinking. I dreamed last night about a spider web. I was down in it, going down in a basement. There was some people down there that were like hiding out, army people, and I don't know why they were there. And there was a doctor there, and we were trying to get back up the stairs, and we couldn't because there's big black widow spider web. And I was trying to break through the spider web so we could all get free. I know why I dreamed that because. Last night when I went in, or yesterday afternoon, I went to the chicken pen to give them some fresh water. And there was an orb weaver. Well, there's an orb weaver. You know what an orb weaver is? It's a really pretty spider. It gets about yay big and has usually has black and yellow and maybe black and white, but usually black and gold. I don't know if it has other colors. That's what I've seen. Uh, it's like stripes and has long, pretty legs and almost looks like an, a woman in a in a elegant evening gown at a ball. I don't know, with long black gloves. It's very Katherine Hepburn looking to me, but in spider form. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense to me. Anyway, so there's one of those, there's one of those by my chicken door and I've left it because they eat, they eat mosquitoes and stuff and they're not, but they're good spiders. So I left it and it's been a pain in patootie because I have to look in and check in on my chickens and I need to change out my hay but I don't want to disturb her and I if I move that door completely it's going to just totally disturb her so I've just been peeking in there um and on the other side of my chicken pen where I water them there's two there's a little bitty one and a bigger one and the little bitty one's about this big now and the great big one is I don't know where she was building a nest or building a web inside the door and I that can't be because I got to get in there so I was trying to clear it out and it had a grasshopper in the web and it got on my hand and I thought it was a spider and I did the Watusi you know if you've ever done the Watusi it's usually I do it for snakes snakes and spider Watusi it's a dance it's it's a tradition anyway it was just a grasshopper so it was okay so I'm sure that's why I dreamed it. But when I saw my little grandson today, he said, Grandma, I had the craziest dream. And I said, so did I. Let me tell you about, you tell me yours, and then I'll tell you mine. He's like, well, what was yours? So I told him, and he said, I don't remember mine. <laughs> so he thought my spider one maybe was, I don't know, caused him to have amnesia. So speaking of dreams, this is a funny story. This is so funny. Okay, so... I went with my two good friends. I have lots of good friends, but I went with these two good friends, and we went to Yukon, Oklahoma, and we stayed in a hotel, and they're like, I think, the Fairfax, they're by the Yukon uh, Baptist Integris, whatever hospital place. And there's a whole bunch of shopping right there and everywhere to eat, so we stayed there, and we just shopped right there, and we, we just had a blast. We went in all the little stores, and anyway, and went to Hobby Lobby and Mardell's, and Big Lots and the Pet Smart Place and some other places, <laughs> Walmart, Brahms, 
Um, we just went all over. And we had a lot of fun. Anyway, we stayed in a hotel. And I was sleeping, sharing a bed with my one friend. And she told me that in the middle of the night, I reached over and slapped her as hard as I could on the hiney. And she said, whoa. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get rid of the bad guys. And then I turned over and went back to sleep. I have no idea because I don't remember a thing. I don't remember anything. But I'm, I'm certainly hoping that I got rid of all the bad guys. So we don't want any bad guys. So no siree. Anyway, and I did get a little bit of yarn while I was there. I'll show you in a second. Um, we, the weather was lovely and there was a pool and we went, that's one reason we went, was we wanted to swim in a pool. So we all went swimming, but the water was kind of cold, which didn't bother me. But one of my friends thought it was too cold for her. And so she set out and we just sat in the water and we all visited and then um, we all started getting cold and we all had to get out and it was a lot of fun. Anyway, um, it's so funny because, you know, when you're young and you go through the night, you take two or three changes of clothes because you're going to go to dinner and you want to look nice. You take your hair products and your makeup bag and you take your two pair of shoes, you know, and maybe a change of earrings or whatever. Um, this is how we go. We got the CPAP machine. We got the arthritis medication. We had at least one bottle of castor oil for rubbing your joints um, and your dark spots. And it really does help. You should try it. And we have, what else? Oh, truth, there is at least two bottles of Advil sitting around and people's medicines. You know, their little pill boxes and uh, denture cream and denture cups, although I didn't have my denture cup actually, but you know, it's just different. It's just different. Lots of, uh, prob I'm sure there was mentholatum and Vicks Vapor Rub in there and allergy medication and yeah, it's just different when you're older. You travel different, right? My makeup consists of an eyebrow pencil, a powder <clears throat> for my ruddy face, and a lipstick, which I may and I may not put on. Anyway, boring. <laughs> We're boring, but um, it was a lot of fun, and I did get some yarn, which I think some of it is not out. I don't know. I put it already in storage because I already discovered it was the wrong color. I'm trying to get something to match my my pillows, which are these. And I think I'm going to have to get this olive green, burgundy, and tan, and maybe a, a rosy, dusty rose. I think that's going to be my next shot. I have a whole bunch of yarn. I keep buying this yarn on sale, thinking it'll match, and I bring it home, and it's like it doesn't. So, say la vie, or whatever they say. Anyway, it's put up, but... Yes, that was our exciting trip. I did find some cool freebie patterns at Hobby Lobby. You know how long it's been since I've seen freebie patterns? A whole slew of them here. This one is all kinds of stuff to do with granny squares, which we already know all kinds of stuff to do with granny squares, don't we? But I thought this might have some better ideas as to putting them together, that, you know, three granny square tote. I've been going to make one of those for a long time. And I definitely have this on my radar. I'm going to make that this fall. I have done decided. Uh, not necessarily exactly like this because I don't really like the neck on it. Uh, it kind of sticks up, but I like the rest of it, and I do want to make me a quarter-length little bolero-esque type thing. This is just a couple of patterns. It's a knitted uh, poncho thingy bopper. And then one of these kind, which I like that. That's crocheted. And, oh, I got two of those. Hmm. And I thought this was pretty. Colors especially. Is that pretty? 
and a baby one with some baby things. And here's an amigurumi one. Got a couple. So, those were nice. Oh, here's one with three cozy blankets. That bobble blanket in the middle, I want to make that bobble blanket one of these days. That is something I have never made. One year I was going to make all the things that I had never made. And so I wanted to do some filet crochet because I've never really done that. And I did some blocks and I made a baby blanket and it was real pretty. Um, I just did uh, like, I had some Amore uh, Red Heart that was soft and I bought it on sale and I made um, these blocks out of it. They were like a dusty rose, a gray, a pale blue, and a charcoal, I think is what they were. And I put them all together and made somebody a baby blanket. And it was real pretty. Uh, but I, my, what I want to do is I want to make a chicken curtain for my window up there. Um, there's a lady that I watch, and I cannot remember her name because this is just random coming at the top of my head, that is from Turkey, I believe. She's very interesting. She has such a sweet voice. And she does filet crochet. And she has a tutorial on a rooster curtain. And I bought the yarn or the thread to make that two or three times, trying to find the right thread for it. Because it's kind of something that's not, we, it's, I mean, we have Walmart, okay? That's what I have. And they do get that, but it comes and goes. So I have to watch. And two or three times I've bought some and thought, oh, that's not going to work after I got it. Anyway, I've never made the rooster, but I would like to make the rooster. And I think my problem with it was I was trying to make it too big with too big a thread because I wanted it to be bigger. But I need to um, add rows at the top and bottom or something to make it bigger because that thread, it was distorting the look it was supposed to have with a little bit bigger gauge thread. Does that make sense? Anyway, um... So I, I tabled that, mostly because I need the written pattern to follow. Her tu tutorial's really good, really good. But I need to look at something also because um, I, I don't see very well and I need to be able to put it up here <laughs> instead of, you know, sticking my nose to the, yeah. And go along with her also. So I, I put that up, but... Um, I was trying all the different things, and that bobble blanket is one I have. I've, I've made baubles before, but that diamond bobble blanket, or sometimes they do a boat. I've seen that. I want to try that someday because I've never done that. Anyhow, but that's things in the future, right? I've got so many things to finish. This is Parker's uh, comfy or cuddly blanket, and this is one skein of. Burnett Blanket Yarn in Raspberry Kiss. I have three of these. This is what I have left, and my plan today, while my grandkids and my son are all off to doing their things, and the house is quiet, and chickens are watered, and I think the goats are taken care of, because I don't really have to take care of the goats anymore. <sighs> That's nice, except for I don't, I don't go out there two or three times a day like I used to, and I kind of miss them. I mean, I do go out there, but I used to, I was out there all the time. So anyway, there everything's quiet. Cows are happy. Horses are happy. The llama is never happy because he's got an attitude. He, he's one of those people that likes to be in a bad mood, I think. Or maybe he just has a bad mood face. I don't know. His name is Logan, and he's non-social. Anyhow, everything's still and quiet, so I'm going to finish these increases and the next skein that I tap onto will be all decreases. So it will be, and it's not intended to be huge, mind you. It will be as big as it is with two skeins of that, which I think is going to be perfect for a little three, four year old. I'm using my Chow Goo, which I love these knitting needles, and this is in a size 9 millimeter or a 13. And you hear them click. I love that sound. So that's what I'm finishing today. Um, I have had a heck of a time with my green beaded shawl. 
I have just had a heck of a time with it. Let me tell you. I have ripped out, I have frogged another bunch. You can see that much is what I frogged last night. Because for some reason I get to watch on TV and there's, this is so easy. This is a virus pattern and I've just, um, I've been using a size H hook or five millimeter, I believe is an H. Yes, it is still, still is. This is, um, one of those Hobby Lobby ones. And, um, I don't normally use this. I normally, this is the hook I like to use. This is a boy with a brushed finish, which these are kind of hard to find. If you ever see them, buy them up. They've got a brush finish and this slidey slidey yarn here really needs something with a little bit of um, grit or uh, grits the wrong word tension now my tulip hooks they have that but they're a little bit short I feel like they're too I feel like the the padded part is too much or there's not enough space anyway my um, clover with the padded handles, which I don't use very much and I don't know why because I really like them. They have this more brushed finish. But generally speaking, my metal hooks are smooth. And I like that most of the time, but not today. Not with this. And this has a little bit of that uh, little tension. And it helps me, uh, I can work faster. Okay, does that make sense? So I have had to take this row out two times. And I'm down to the close to the end. So a row is a big deal. I had to take three or four rows out last night twice. I did that. My fault, my fault is because um, at the point where you put your three um, loops in your fan or your shell from the previous row, and you begin your next row of, of shells. I several times only put two and I did try to fudge it and but it's a gift and I want it to be right so I pulled it all out you know and put two times so I'm gonna try to catch that back up today that's my goal for the day this is that Rena's thread crafts and thread I can't find a little paper it's up here somewhere on my table. But I love this yarn. I think it's so beautiful. And I have some more. I have this one that is hers also. And uh, that was that's Fiber Spider's um, slice of pie. So super easy to make. And that's why I started it. Because I wanted something to show this beautiful yarn off that I got. And look, see the dog. Oh, chihuahua. The dog has messed. This is very bad. This is very bad. You do not want this tangle entanglements here. Not a good situation. I'm going to fix that right now. Okay. Then I'm going to put this up. Because if you get this messed up, it will rock your world. As it does with any thread yarn any yarn anyway but especially a thread yarn another thing i have found it's not a good idea to put it in a wicker basket because it every time you move it you're going to catch see there's a catch right there i do not want that to happen not good but this is so pretty and i think this will show the yarn off really well because it's just a granny square in with an increase you know like you increase at you make your so many rows one two three four five rows is what I did um, maybe it should have been four but I can't remember you increase at the end and in the center and then you switch at that point you made your little base it's hard to see but you've made your base and then you begin your increases so the next row you do three regular rows with no increases and then you do a row of all increases and then you make six rows of, of no increases except always on the end 
but six rows of no center increases. And then you crochet 12 rows. And then you make a row of increases, and then you crochet 24 rows with no increases. See, and 48, and however that goes, till you're out of thread. And that is going to make a very big wrap around shawl, which is what I wanted for this beautiful thread yarn from Rena. And I think I heard uh, Crystal, I believe it's her name at Bag o Day, who I listened to, said at last week anyway, she had a promotional code on there. Go watch Bag o Day and the one where she's showing that off, and you'll find out what it is, and you can get a discount. So, but this is just plum beautiful. Like this is like evergreen forest or mist or something. I can't remember. It's the green one with the black thread. And it is so much prettier than, I mean, I thought, when I first saw it, I thought this is going to be pretty. But it is so much prettier than even I expected looking at it. And I want to finish it before summer's completely gone because it is a summer shawl. That is for my boyfriend, or my son's girlfriend, Oi Chihuahua. Anyway, and I've got to keep that away from the, the puppy, well, that's another story, and away from the basket, because the basket will pull it. While I was there, I bought this. This is from Hobby Lobby. It was Mandela String. Mandela line brand. It was $6.49, but it was on sale. This is in the colorway Beat, and you can't see it very good, but it looks like that. There's the colors inside. You can see this. These are the colors. And this is, I had two of those, and those are the slipperiest stuff. Let me tell you, so very slippery. Um, I got two of those, and I've already got my grabby hook and made a few stitches just to see how it would be. Now I could only get two of those and I think I need a little more than two. So this is the same colors except it doesn't have the gold and it has, um, it has a, instead of the purpley color, it has these more of these center rusty colors. I am going to add that in, and I haven't decided exactly how. It may be that I use it for the border and only use part of the colors. It may be um, that I do three rows and three rows, but I've started already just to see, and it is going to crochet up really nice. It's just slippy, slidey, and that, you know, is not fun. So my whole way, instead of working on my Parker's blanket, I untangled and balled up that yarn. <laughs> and I am putting it in this bag, and I'm going to put it in a Ziploc here in a little bit. Hey, Howard, come here. So that I can, um, so that I can not have it tangled, because this had a horrible tangle in it and it was my fault I had it in a wicker basket bad idea I know that and when I picked it up I pulled a thread so there's like eight threads that are plied you know not um, twisted so they will catch and it did and I had to take a chunk out which is a, a killer but I got it done and so that's all good. Now let me introduce you to Howard. Say hi, Howard. Say hi. No, Howard. Look in front. Oh, you want to kiss me. You don't need to kiss me. No. No, you eat gross things. No, Howard, don't kiss me. This is Howard. He's a little weenie dog. See him. Ain't he cute? So far, he's done pretty good. He's only been here about three days. He was at my daughter's for several days. And he's just very sweet. Grandkids are in love. Oh, don't kiss me. Don't kiss me. Don't. Don't kiss me, Howard. 
He's already discovered chasing chickens. Yes, we had to have a talk. And he's already discovered yarn. And he's already learned when I say no, he goes and lays on his bed over there. And he's very sweet. He does have a collar, but he doesn't like it. So the grandkids keep taking it off of him when they come over. Anyway, he's a little male, mini dachshund. We'll see if how many he is. You know, I've I've gotten minis before. I had a mini um, named Coco, and she had the worst personality for a dachshund. I tell you, she was she was registered, had papers and everything, and she was this. She didn't even look dachshund really. She she did as a puppy, but when she got bigger, she kind of looked something like something else, and and she just was not. She was just not anyway. She was a dog that got under the trailer when we were moving cattle, and it did not kill her. It, it, we didn't even know she was hit. Um, she ran underneath it. She was always doing something like that. Uh, but later that evening, my husband said, I wonder if she got under that, you got bumped, just bumped by the wheel. I said, I don't know, she acts fine. Why do you say that? He said, well, she was out there, and all of a sudden she was running to the house. He said, you might watch her. So I did. I watched her, and she was fine. And always, when my husband was gone, always, the day the vet was closed, over the weekend, she started kind of acting like she didn't feel good. And I thought, well, Monday I'm going to take her to the vet because she'd had one litter of puppies, and we, we would have liked to have had another litter of puppies and gotten a puppy from her. I had gotten two beautiful puppies from her and, and had given them away to family members. And Anyway, the daddy was the best dachshund ever, ever created. He was our hero. We loved him. But she, um, she just laid down and died. She just died. And nobody was here. So, I mean, like there was no warning. I couldn't even take her anywhere. Um, then it was a Sunday when I realized she's not looking good. And I called my husband. He said, well... If she's, if she's, you know, still acting like that tomorrow, take her to the vet. He'll be in. Okay. And I don't drive, so it's not like I could drive two and a half hours to Oklahoma City to the vet, which I wouldn't do anyway. Um, because I don't drive and no one was home. Well, I do drive. I just don't drive out of my area that I'm, because I don't, I have some visual issues, okay. So, like, I can see the road and I can see the semi coming at me. But I can't read any of the signs, and so that gets you in trouble sometimes when you're... I can read them, but I have to be close enough to them. Well, by then it's too late. So anyway, long story. Coco died. So annoying. And everybody was shattered. And But she, she died. She wasn't... She didn't ever act like she was hurt. She just was like she was tired. And she just lay down and went to sleep. And our old farm dog did that too. He, I thought he acted because his farm dog chasing cows and you know whatnot. And I, he just was sleepy one day, and I thought, and I thought wondered about. I remembered Coco, and I'm like, oh, are you getting down? I'm like, um, uh oh, you know. But then he was fine. Well, then he laid under the car all day. But then he was fine. He was drinking. He wasn't eating good, though. But he was a funny, funny dog. He was, he, you know how some dogs will just eat everything. He was a picky eater. He wouldn't, didn't really like scraps. Unless it was a bone or something. And, um, anyway, he just laid down and died. He just went out to the chicken pen. He was laying there. Looking at the chickens, next thing I know, he was laying down and he was dead. We decided that either somebody gave him a bone, which is possible, probable, one of the kids or something. I would have gave him a bone. I've given bones to dogs my whole life. Um, and somehow that bothered his stomach. Or he got kicked. I think he got kicked by something. Just because... I can't think of anything else that could have done it. And he was, he had no symptoms of that, though. So I don't know, but he was old. Anyway, it was his time, and he died.
just like, well, is he getting better? Is he, is he just tired? What's wrong with him? And then he died. So that's my long story of woe with dogs, right? So this is now Coco. I, we miss Coco a lot. That was years ago, years ago, quite a few. And we'll miss the big farm dog a lot too, I'm sure. But farm life, you know, that's how it is. But anyway, so I have Howard. We, I call him Howard. Um, I thought that was a good name for him, so that's what I named him. And I... I think he'll be good. I think he'll be a good little dog to have. Uh, the other male that we had that we liked so much, we went, my husband went, took the grandkids to the pond, and there was a badger hole, and that dog was forever chasing, because that's what they're for, you know, that's what they're made for. And he went down a badger hole and never did come out. He never squawked, he never made a peep, he just went down in this hole and they tried to call him back and he wouldn't come and he never did come out of that hole. And that was really traumatic. That was years ago too. But anyway, those puppies from that, the, that pair are still around and they're old and one of them is a terrible diabetic and gets three shots of insulin a day. And the other one I think is fat and sassy still in my... Um, my niece has both of them. <laughs> it's a long story. Dogs, dogs, dogs. Anyway, so I did not start this. I think I talked about this. This is Bella Lino. Linen and cotton and viscose. viscose. And it's just a linen. It's kind of got a bit of a sheen twisted. I have three skeins of it. And I have some beads. And it's the next thing I will probably make. And it has a pattern. This is from the garage sale. I probably will not use that pattern. Because I want to make... Um, I made my sister a, a shawl, a scarf. A desert scarf. Because that's because she lived in the desert. That was just um, a mesh style. But every so many rows I would put... I would fill the meshes in. So it wasn't really filigree... But it was kind of that way. And then I beaded it. And it was real pretty. Howard's in there. He's wanting something. Um, it was real pretty. And I mailed it to her in El Paso. And it got stolen in the mail. <laughs> so um, she never did get it. I made her lots of stuff, though. It's not a big deal. I made her. She moved back to Oklahoma shortly after that. And I made her socks because she likes socks. Um, but... I've been always going to make myself one, and so my daughter found that at a garage sale. And I'm like, I'm going to make me that. I'm going to make that for me. So that's my plan for that. I have not worked on my rose trellis afghan. It's just been put on hold. I am getting ready to finish and put up. I don't know, this may be a gift at Christmas time. This is that um, Liberty wool, and it was four skeins, and you can tell where the skeins stopped and started. It was two of this purpley color, grape, and then two skeins of this um, variegated, and I have another, um, which I only have this much left, and I have one more of the purpley color, Classic Elite Yarns Liberty. And this came from the garage sale. Um, and it is 100% wool. It is machine washable, which I probably will not do that, but it says it is. I'm probably not going to keep it. Anyway, it is, I think it's so pretty, and this is Old Shale. I love this pattern. I want to make myself a shawl out of this pattern one day. That three corner shawl. These are my Clover Chakumi size eights. I love these. I love these needles. The whole reason I like to make washcloths is I like those little Chakumi. Well, I'm going to finish that. That needs to get finished. 
And I really need to um, finish my blanket for the Christ Christmas exchange. If I go, if something doesn't happen, last year my water broke. I didn't get to go. It's just down the road. But I couldn't leave because I had all these neighbors here helping me. <laughs> water is everywhere. Well, it they started out, they were moving a line. And then a line broke, which is very common when you're digging up like that. So... I didn't feel like I could leave them. Although then I'll probably be glad I was gone. <laughs> I'm probably mostly in the way. Hey, Howard, what are you doing? Chew on your duck. Howard, Howard, quit chewing. Howard, don't chew the carpet. No, go lay down on your bed. You go lay down. You better go lay down. It's being naughty. Anyway, that's what I'm doing today in my nice quiet day. Um, and I'm planning, he's going to growl at me now because I'm getting after him for chewing the carpet. Don't be chewing the carpet. Oh. No, talking to you. So I'm going to finish my skein. I'm going to get my reverse going and I'm going to catch up where I had to take out on that green. And I'm going to, um, find a better basket to put my, I need to put my, my, um, Rita's in a Ziploc bag or something so that it doesn't get, hey, stop chewing the couch. So it doesn't get tore up by my, by my dog, by my crazy wild dog. <laughs> anyway, I hope everybody has a really good week. It's Tuesday. The Chinese place is closed, so we can't go eat buffet. Barbecue place is close too. Um, and the other good place is close. So don't go trying to eat out on Tuesday. Um, and it's going to be warm. It's going to be hot. So stay hydrated. Howard, stop it. Goodness. He's chewing the carpet. <sighs> anyway. It's all good. It's going to be the rest of the week's going to be okay. Just don't watch the news. It'll make you insane. It'll make you crazy. Mm, nah, just don't. <laughs> just don't. Get you some knitting and some crocheting and some iced tea. It would be hot tea normally, but it's just too hot for hot tea. So I'm drinking some iced coffee, which isn't really normal for me. But that's what I've been having lately because it's been so hot. And watch a good old movie. That would work. Uh, Unconquered. That's a good one. And it's come up on YouTube. That's a good one. The Farmer's Daughter is another good one I watched recently. Um, Unconquered is really good, though. Gary Cooper. Oh, you know. Gary Cooper. So, do that. Avoid the news. You'll feel better about it all. <laughs> and... Just keep the faith. Keep the faith. Read some Psalms. Read the Psalms. That's really what we need to do in troubled times. So, and crochet. Knit on, knit on through it all. Have a blessed day. Love y'all. Bye bye.